This video will provide you with 21 ways on how to increase your creativity. That's right, you have the ability, just like these three geniuses, to produce something special and make the world a better place. Let's jump into the first one right now. Number one, believe you're creative. Just please do it in longer shorts. Ralph Waldo Emerson has said, we become what we think about all day long. So if you find yourself getting bummed out that you can't come up with ideas, it could be because you're just saying that you're not creative. It's just nonsense, not true. You are creative, believe it. But remember, wear longer shorts. Number two, try something new. Studies have shown that your creativity increases when you're outside your comfort zone. Some examples include taking a shadow puppet class at your local college, trying a bag of Funyuns if you haven't already, or if you're a single young lady, you can go out with me sometime. Uh, let me see the rest of this video and I'll get back to you. Okay, good enough. Moving on. Number three, capture all your ideas. I remember this quote from the book The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Any new idea not captured within 37 seconds is likely never to be recalled. You are creative, you are a genius, so start storing it. You can write them down, text them to yourself using a free app, or use a voice recorder app. Just don't yell. There's really no need to yell. Number four, be aware of Sturgeon's Law. It's a law that states that 90% of what you create is crap. It's nonsense, it's no good. So in this pie chart here, 90%, the blue, is stuff that's no good. What we want is that green right there. Keep in mind, this is not just you and me, this applies to everyone. So think about all the geniuses, all the creative people in the world. 90% of what they've done is no good. So this will encourage you to keep going when you've hit a rut, just to know that 90% of the stuff is no good, but we'll find that 10% someday. Number four and five go together. Think about Sturgeon's Law. 90% of what you create is no good. So make a quantity for how many ideas you need to solve your problem. For example, if you need one idea, come up with 10. Odds are you're gonna find one, and this will represent the green guy right here, what you want. So set a quota. Number six, embrace criticism. This is crucial. Any idea that you create that's not in line with the status quo will be criticized. And I remember in the book, Essence of Success by Earl Nightingale, a fantastic book. He talked about Walt Disney, how Walt Disney would not work on an idea until a majority of his staff was against it. Embrace that criticism and use it as a sign that you're on the right track. Number seven, share your idea before it's perfect. I was on graphicstock.com and I searched the keyword perfect and this is the picture that came up. I thought I'd share. I highlighted an amazing quote from this book, Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull. This guy is the president of Pixar, a company known for their creativity. Don't wait for things to be perfect before you share them with others. Show early and often. It'll be pretty when we get there, but it won't be pretty along the way. You have big ideas inside of you and it's going to require a team to develop it. Look at it like a diamond. Show people the coal so they can help you make it a diamond. Number eight, leave your idea undone. We are completion creatures. Once we start something, we want to finish it. I'm sure you've had several times you're trying to solve a problem and you're just stuck, but you sit there for an hours on end and nothing happens. That's working harder, not smarter. Think about your thoughts. 90% of your thoughts are made up in your subconscious mind. You're not aware of this. So if you're ever stuck, just walk away, let your subconscious mind do the work for you, and you'll have a moment of insight, an aha moment, and you'll think, wow, I'm really creative. But the thing is, you're working this whole time. You're using your subconscious mind to do the work for you. Now this is working smarter, not harder. Leave a project undone, and you'll have a moment of insight very soon. Number nine, give yourself constraints with both your resources and your time. For the resources, I know it's easy to say that you're missing out on something, create something wonderful now, but think about the show MacGyver. What made him so creative is that he had to create stuff with a very limited supply. Now think about the time. Let's say we want to double your income. I give you an option to do it in 10 years or six months. Which option are you gonna be more creative in? You know it's six months. Give yourself constraints with your resources and your time. Number 10, meditate. There are many different forms of meditation, but at the end of the day, I look at it like pizza. It's all pretty good. I also think about Jack Canfield. He was thinking about coming up with a title for this book that later became Chicken Soup for the Soul. He was struggling to find the answer, but through meditation, he came up with that title, Chicken Soup for the Soul. It sold 8 million copies. It's an amazing book, but that title is awesome too. 
your amazing idea may be one meditation session away. Number 11, dress for success. I remember reading in the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert on this idea. Basically, the idea is looking at all of us and they'll go to the person who's well-dressed, representing themselves well, knowing that they'll execute on their idea. It made me chuckle, but I'm starting to think that maybe that's true. If you want to dress for success and look really nice, that you may be receptive to more ideas. Give it a try. Number 12, be passionate about your subject. I think about this quote from Yo-Yo Ma, a famous cellist. Passion is one great force that unleashes creativity, because if you're passionate about something, then you're willing to take risks. I can make a future video on finding your passion, but just know with more passion comes more creativity. Number 13, doodle. Steve Jobs has been known as being a doodler. But if you need more, I was doing a little research and found that the Discovery Channel's annual Shark Week was believed to be conceived during a brainstorming session in a bar in the mid-80s. Shark Week's producer, Brooke Brunette, has been quoted saying, the idea for Shark Week was definitely scribbled down on the back of a cocktail napkin. This drawing on that cocktail napkin was done by me. Wow, thank you, Ryan Gosling. Thank you, The Rock. Number 14, listen to music. The evidence isn't clear cut here, but some people find music helpful. I know I had friends in school that would listen to music while they studied. I wonder what this rabbit is listening to. Probably Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. You know, because rabbits are known for getting it on a lot. Number 15, physical movement. Exercise of any sort has been shown to have a positive effect on your creativity. Do whatever you want. I don't know how this guy gets away not having a shirt on. I went to my gym last week, I was working out without my shirt off, and the manager said, Hey Magic Mike, put your shirt back on. I thought it was pretty clever because there's a movie called Magic Mike, and my name is Mike. Moving on. Number 16, have invisible counselors. I remember getting this idea from the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, a must read if you haven't read it. But it was in the chapter on the sixth sense. But Napoleon Hill had a procedure every single night just before bed. He would shut his eyes and see in his imagination a group of men that he admired. He'd ask them questions and he would get answers back. Your imagination is powerful, so don't knock this until you try it. Number 17, have real counselors too. It's amazing to study and read books of people you admire and have an imaginary conversation with these people, such as for me, Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, and Dave Funyon, but it's also good to have mentors in person too. Number 18, be patient and know that your creative genius may not be appreciated until long after you're gone. I think of author Herman Melville here. He was born in 1851, died in 1891, He's a famous author that wrote Moby Dick, but Moby Dick didn't become a well-known success until the 1920s. It just takes time. Be patient. Number 19, create for the right reasons. Look at this picture. You can create for money or something larger, something more important, out of love of serving people. I just read The Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer and he helped me realize how important this tip is. When you're in tune with your source, when you're creating out of love for the right reasons, you are more receptive to creative ideas. Number 20, watch funny content. I know I'm not Louis C.K., but I do know that about 10% of the time people laugh. That's why I've made about 10 jokes throughout this video, just to get you to laugh, because laughter can bring moments of inspiration. And that's what I want, to increase your creativity. Number 21, stay curious. You can stay curious by asking these questions. How does that work? and how can you make it better? You ask these two questions, stay curious, you will create something amazing someday. If you've enjoyed this video and you're curious for more, subscribe today and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. This is your friend Michael from Your Inspired Life, helping you inspire before you expire. Hope you enjoyed this video. Can't wait to see you in the next one.